Welcome to part two of this video in which we are analyzing the tension necessary in a rope to pull a barrel up over a 0.5 meter step. And in part one we solved the whole thing uh, using geometry and uh, uh, the net moment and the net forces are equal to zero. And here we'd like to resolve it using the fact that this is a three force body. And the reason for this is just to illustrate the fact that um, a three-force body has an interesting property which makes solving uh, for forces, in this case, a little easier than it would be otherwise. And the, the situation with the three-force body in static equilibrium is this. The forces on the body either have to be parallel or they have to be concurrent in the or in other words, they have to all pass through the same point. Those are the only two conditions under which you can get static equilibrium with three forces acting on a rigid body. So what I've done is redrawn our uh, free body diagram to show T, W, and F, A. Again, T and W we know the direction for, W we know the magnitude of, so we need to solve for T, and we need to solve for the direction and magnitude of F, A. Okay, so let's use the fact that we know that we have a three-force diagram, or a three-force body here. So this is the line of action of T. This is the line of action of W. Should be a nice straight line. And T and W are certainly not parallel, which tells us that all the forces must have their line of action action intersect this point where T and W intersect. What this tells us then is what the line of action for FA must be. So if we look at this, um, it has to intersect this point here and it also has to uh, go through the point where FA is applied to the barrel, uh, where the barrel contacts the step. So that means that the line of action, which should be a straight line, Looks like uh, the lines of action got a bit inebriated there. Um, so the line of action is given by this dashed green line. And we can actually now find the angle between the vertical and this line of action for FA. That will tell us um, what the relative magnitudes of the components of FA are. And once we do that, it's a simple matter of solving for the magnitude. Okay, so using trigonometry, we have a triangle. Here we'll draw the triangle in purple because we haven't used that color for a while. Okay, so you can see that we want the angle theta. We know the opposite side and the adjacent side. And so we can say then that theta is the inverse tangent of the opposite side, 0.866 meters, over the adjacent side, which is 1.5 meters, which, when you work that out, turns out to be 30 degrees. So this angle here is 30 degrees. So now, if we just use our static equilibrium condition, the summation of forces in the y direction is equal to zero, and the reason I chose that is I know the magnitude of W and the only other force in the Y direction is the component of FA in the vertical direction, which is, um, I can write it like this. Okay, and we know because the angle here is 30 degrees that this magnitude will be, or that this, the, the magnitude of the Y component of FA, I guess I'll write it FAY, we know that FAY is equal to the magnitude FA times the cosine of 30 degrees. And so we can then say up here that W, or I'm sorry, or let's make things that go up positive, F A Y minus W is equal to zero, 
which says that FA cosine 30 degrees is equal to W. And I can solve this for FA turning out to be 2,829 pounds. Okay, so that tells me what the magnitude of FA is. I now know this. It's this 2,829 pounds. Summing the forces in the X direction, I know that um, T, well, let's write it down, T, oops, negative T, because it's going to the left, plus FA sine of 30 degrees equals zero. And from this, I know FA, it's given by this value. I know the sine of 30 degrees, it actually turns out to be a half. And then to the nearest um, uh, unit, I've got then T is equal to 14, 14 pounds. Okay, so 1,414 pounds. Okay, so um, this is kind of nice. We got the same answer here as we did in part one. We simplified our work somewhat by noting that we have a three-force uh, body and that in a three-force body all of the forces have to act um, through a single point. That gave us the angle at which FA was working and from there it was fairly straightforward to find the magnitude of FA. Once we had the magnitude of FA we could find the magnitude of T. So hopefully you found this instructive. Thanks for watching.